What I'd like to talk about today is the biology of the opioid crisis. Clearly, as we think about building community, the community is under assault from the opioid epidemic. I could give lots of slides about the statistics, but the bottom line to remember is that the opioid crisis is the number one killer of people under the age of 50. And last year, more people died from drug overdose than from cars or guns combined. So we have a problem to address. And one of those problems is that community, unfortunately, believes that, that drug addiction is a moral failure. And that's what I'd like to address today. A very simple take home lesson. Addiction is a brain disease. And it should be treated like a disease, not a moral failure. By definition, it's a chronic relapsing disease of brain reward. And I'll share with you some, some basic ideas about the brain reward system. But it's also a defect in motivation and memory and circuitry that's characterized by drug craving and seeking and use in spite of adverse outcomes, in spite of losing friends and family and jobs. It's a disease. The reward pathway is one of the most primitive in development. All animals have a basic reward system that pays attention to those things in your environment and your life that are good for the species, that reinforce our propagation. So things like food and water and companionship and sex are all activating the same pathway in our brain. We know the structures of those pathways. We've characterized them. They are involved in monitoring, they're involved in monitoring the environment, paying attention to it, remembering where we had that pleasurable feeling so that we can do it again. And it's involved in emotion and attaching saliency to the event so that it has impact for us. The brain structures are really well characterized. There are things like the ventral tegmental area, the amygdala, the nucleus accumbens, the medial prefrontal cortex. But that's the science of it. We understand what's going awry. And we have ways to address that. And we're trying to develop new ways. Addiction is a disease of the brain. It's a biological problem. It's not a moral failing. You don't just tell the addict, oh, quit that heroin problem you have. Instead, we have to help those individuals, recognizing that it's a disease. We have to bring all of the tools in our armamentarium against helping that individual overcome a change in their brain that has set them up for continued abuse. Community doesn't recognize that in many cases. It's a biological problem not a moral failure. My team and I have been studying the addiction process now for over 25 years. We've got a handle on some of the things that are changing in the brain. And the brain is changing. It starts with casual use. It might start with the prescription of an, of an opiate agonist for treating pain. But then, the drug becomes abused. It's not taken now to alleviate pain, but to get high. And the brain starts changing, as you'll see in a minute. And that leads to dependence, where you're physically dependent on having the drug on board. This is a pharmacologically induced imprint. You are changing the brain. And then, perhaps you're fortunate enough for an intervention, as we heard earlier. And you become clean and sober and you end up in the wrong environment where you're getting environmental cues that remind you of the problem, remind you of the joy of taking the drug, or stress comes into your, your life, the loss of a loved one, a divorce. And you remember you can escape that pain by turning back to the drug. And then of course there are psychosocial factors that might dr drive you to relapse. And in our opinion, that's the main problem. We can incarcerate somebody, we can intervene with someone, we can get them clean and sober, but maintaining that is hard. 
And so for the last 15 or 20 years, we've been studying this persistent molecular imprint that occurs in the brain and sets the individual up for relapse. Those changes last, uh, in, in our case, for very long periods of time of abstinence. And that's why an alcoholic will frequently tell you, I'm an alcoholic, even though they've been clean and sober for a long time, because they know they're at risk for relapsing and falling back into the darkness that is addiction. These data come from a friend of mine uh, at Wake Forest University, Jeff Martin, who has a marvelous or had a marvelous model for getting rats to self-administer heroin through an intravenous uh, port. And they would perform complex tasks to get heroin. But in this experiment, what he did was he provided them with unlimited access every day in successive days. And what you see is what we observe in humans. And that's that the dose escalates with time, with each day's opportunity to self-administer heroin. But the brain is changing. The body is changing. I draw your attention to the y-axis on the left-hand side of the figure. That's a logarithmic scale. By the end of 30 days of self-administration, these rats are taking 100 times more than they took at the beginning. In fact, at 30 days, they're tasting, taking doses of drugs that would have killed them on day one. And hence, we have this serious problem that the recovering addict, when they relapse with heroin or opiates in general, they'll go back to taking what they were taking at the end of their addiction and we end up with a lethal overdose.